Mikey Swartz here, Whiplash DVD. I'm about to put a new bumper on this truck. I already took this loose. Planning to cut some stuff off here. I want to get maximum clearance out of it, of course. So I figured this stuff's all got to go. And I'm going to run all the way down to the frame here and come up at a, at a pretty sharp angle. First thing I'm going to do is just tear this down. I'm going to cut all this off because it hangs down so low. I know it's there for protection, but you know, I'm going to redo all that stuff. So this isn't going to be needed anymore. It's just going to be kind of in the way. First, I got to unbolt these lines. Okay. Yeah, just let that hang for now. I think what I'm going to do first is cut these brackets off. Uh, you can see the ones all bent up on this thing already. Anyhow, I'm going to see if the air chisel will take these off of here. Give it a try. Very nice. It sure beats cutting with a grinder or a salsa or something. Excellent. Next thing it's got to go is this big other thing here. And just to give you an idea what I got in mind here, I'm planning on a tube from down here where this curls up at an angle up like this. So I'm, I'm going to have to cut this off at an angle. I figure I'm going to start up here, go at a 45 degree angle and try to not hit my condenser and my radiator. And then I'll touch it up. So right now I'm just kind of winging it. I didn't quite cut the whole way through it because that way to hold this side up while I'm cutting the other side, it'll make it easier, you know? Now this side I gotta be extra careful because I, I got these lines sticking out here. Oh, there, you were supposed to stop me. All right, that's what I don't wanna hit. You know what happened? I got into that and it, and it moved my blade over. All right, we got a little protection in there now. All right, hold that up for me, cameraman. Thank you, bear. Okay, so we got rid of this. Um, Took a couple pounds off of it too. Before we had stuff sticking out and down, that's all gone now. That'll give us a lot more clearance on this truck. Now I can fit some pipe up under here and get an idea of what kind of angle it's gonna run at. See if I need to make any bends to it or whatever. Of course, I wanna get as much clearance as possible, but I gotta protect the rad that sticks down pretty far. You know what I did on my old truck? I actually put a Mitsubishi Evo rad in it that's set like this high and I had no AC in that truck so it was a lot easier to do and then I mounted this real steep it was nice but on this truck I'm not going to do that it's a lot more work than I want to get into right now and I want to keep my AC so right now I'm just going to put a slice through this frame rail and then I might cut through it here too I just want to bend that out of the way so I can run my pipe up through here then I'll probably have to notch this um, and I'm debating if I'm going to bring it up and Around the, around the tube and then bring it straight. I think that would be a lot easier, but I really prefer to run it up at an angle the whole way out here. I won't really know until I start cutting, so I guess that's what I'm gonna do now. Not all my tools are readily available here. This won't work. Just gotta get it out of the way for now. This is just a piece of pipe I'm using a test fit. 
just to give me an idea of where this might sit. I need a little more clearance there. It's definitely not as steep as I need it to be. I'm gonna hold this up in here, get an idea where I need to trim some more out, like right there and right here. And I'm just gonna take a little off at a time so I don't go overboard with it, because I am gonna need something to weld to, of course. For now. a little bit because I can't really do it on the side right? well, everything that way, just so I don't get to this radiator. Test fit and pipe. I think I'm going to notch this out right here now. Looking pretty good. I'm just gonna tack this piece of plate kind of like this to my skid plate just to make sure when I put these pipes in that they're gonna line up here without sticking down too far. And then this is gonna end up probably getting welded in permanently to, to my lower skid plate thing. But uh, for now I'm just gonna tack it so I have something to go by to set the pipe up. So now I can test fit my tubing, lay it right on top of that piece. Ooh, look, that got a little hot right there. See kids, you gotta watch out when you're torching. Right there on the corner of the radiator. It would have been smart to get rid of the radiator for this, but I want it there so I can see. Yes, so I've got to make sure to protect it straight across here. And I'm right at the point now where I don't want to go any further. So I'm, I'm going to call it right there. It's there. Nice and steep. High clearance clearance. Since I have to duplicate what I did here on the other side, uh, more or less, for this front surface, I'm just going to make a pattern real quick with a piece of paper. I just push it over that and kind of rub my dirty hands on the edges of it. This is the professional way to do it. Trust me. All right. So it gives you a pattern. I take some scissors and just uh, cut on the dark spots. I mean, this is just, you know, this is kid stuff right here. It works. See that? I'm going to flip this backwards. Hold her up to this side. Oh, and what have we here? A pattern. Hmm. I just need a draw in there. What a marker, preferably. Silver one would have been best. I go too far because I can pound it back in then to weld it. Ooh. <whistles> messy, messy, messy. It is. It's getting bad out here. And YouTube viewers, they don't want to watch us clean up. You can, you can make an instructional on how to help it clean up. Yes, you can make that one. <laughs> Swartz gets banned from YouTube. It's bound to happen sooner or later. I mean, if I can get kicked out of a mud bog. Turn that shit the fuck I knew that you go, that's the first thing. Took a little break there to pick up some new equipment. I got here a Husky angle finder that we just picked up for 20 bucks. Gotta zero that little guy out. Okay. 
figure out what my angle is going to have to be here to cut the end of this tubing off. So I'm going to lay this in here like so. Oh, almost a 45 degree. Now I'm going to need two of these pieces, but I'm only going to have to cut that angle once. I'm going to cut it right in the middle, then cut my other piece flat. Using one and three quarter by 0120 wall tubing, DOM tubing. Let's see how that fits here. Pretty nice, pretty nice. All right, yeah, definitely a little too long, but that's all right, because I'll trim the top. Pretty good fit. I'm gonna cut another piece now to match. Instead of measuring this, I'm just gonna lay this right up here. Mikey likes it. I got two identical bars cut now and I grinded some paint off of here. I'm gonna clamp these on. I'm gonna measure whatever I can to make sure these things are pretty even. I'm kind of eyeballing them too to make sure they're at the same angle. The other thing we can do, of course, is check them with the angle finder. So about 35 degrees and 35 degrees. Something else I can measure is like from here straight into the body, you know, like eh, almost 14 and a half. Straight in, 14 and a half. You know, I could even measure to the ground. This lift should be pretty much straight, almost 56 and 56. I'm gonna take a few more measurements just to be sure. And then I'm gonna tack weld this. Just a little tack here and there to hold these in place. Cause honestly, I might end up moving them, you know? Just three little tacks that will hold it. You know, I just bought a tubing bender and that's all part of this episode. We're gonna be testing that thing out. Something else I just bought is this digital angle finder. And while I was at it, I, I made this. This is just two yardsticks that I put together with a little wing nut there and it's uh, just tight enough that it holds its shape. I'm gonna use this to lay up here and figure out what angle I need to bend this bumper at. And then I'll put my digital angle finder up against here to see what the actual angle is. I'm considering the edge of my fender because I'm gonna make fenders too then blow these fenders out to about here. Zero out this angle finder, this thing's nice. And uh, just lay this on here. Whoa. About 139 degrees. Should be the same on this side. Let me check and make sure that comes out. I just need to figure out the width of these where I'm gonna want the bends. I would say 43 inches. And then from here back, I would say 24. You know, I can always go a little too long because I'll be cutting these off then. So I might just go uh, 26. Make sure this side works out too. Yeah, 26 should be more than enough. Here's my very quick sketch. Look at that, that's quick and easy. And then what was our angle there, kids? 138.8 degrees. Thank you, Bear. This software is online, it's free to use. Benditonline.com about as simple as could be. I'm sure there's way better programs out there, but this is gonna work fine for me. And this is pretty simple. You choose if you measure it in inches or millimeters. Total bends, it's gonna be easy, just two. We are using a six inch radius. And then we just go by the picture here. Length one for us is gonna be 26 inches. And the degrees will be 139. Length two. Our center will be 43 inches. And then angle number two here is gonna be the same 139. And length three is gonna be the same 26 inches. So then we calculate the bend angle that you entered is not between one and 90 degrees. Oh, son of a bitch. No, you can keep rolling. 
Okay, well, I just realized what I did wrong. I zeroed it out when it's shut. I need to zero it out when it's flat and then get an angle. Or I could just subtract 139 from 180, which should be like, what, 41? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bear. Let's try that. Say we got 41 degrees and 41 degrees. I'm gonna go recheck these angles just to make sure. And then I'll write these down and we'll do it. I just went ahead and printed this off. So I'm gonna make a cut in this tubing at 96.6 inches. At $5.40 a foot, you don't wanna screw anything up with this tubing. First thing I'm gonna do now is clean this up a little bit so I can mark it. Got some acetone and a spray bottle here. I know I need to put a mark right about in this area and right about in this area. Love the pole. Oh yeah. At 24.75 inches, at 67.56, pretty simple really. First thing I gotta do is level this workbench. It's not quite level. Okay, we're level. Thank you, Tim. To make sure we're straight here, we are 41 degrees. Why, it was an easy bend after all. An easy bend. Yeah. Oh, it's going to look pretty sweet. All right, just took a good nap back in here again today. Got my bumper set up here now. Hooked up some bungee cords to hold her there in place. Been taking measurements and stuff too, just to make sure everything looks good. And I marked my pipe here. I don't have a notcher, so I've just been drawing on this pipe to try to figure out about where it's gonna have to go. These are just in here for spacers. Just cleaned off my old marks. I'm gonna make some new ones. I'm marking right where the tubing is touching. Right there and right there. That way I know those are the deep spots. So I know this is the deep spot where this tubing's gonna fit. I want it to butt it right up on the end of this. So basically we know we need a shape like this on there and we need that on both sides. Where I made my mark there, where that tubing edge is gonna touch, I'm just gonna cut a V into it for starters on each side. And then I'll put a grinding wheel on and actually round this off. See how that's fitting up against there? Not too bad. On this side, it's cut a little too deep right here. Um, but you know, once we round like these corners off, it'll settle down in there. Wipe these marks off and then we'll put fresh marks on where we need to take a little more material off. Now I'm just gonna mark these spots that are touching like right here. I wanna take a little material off and right here. Switch to a grinding wheel now. Take these high spots off. this again yeah that's looking real good the bottom of that one looks good the top's got a little gap but that'll be easy to fill i'm gonna have my cameraman put the camera down and actually kind of help me test fit this a little better and then we'll get this tacked on here well that bumper's perfectly level now what am i checking on <laughs> there's not a straight <laughs> panel on the truck to check um i don't know how about right here Oh my it goodness. looks level. We're gonna check and make sure this is level too. Wait a second, I don't like it. Go a little higher actually. Just a smidgey higher. I'm gonna tack it there and then we'll see what it looks like. Got the truck backed out. I think it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Just taking some extra measurements, make sure everything's straight. I think it looks good. I'm really digging it. eventually gonna run tubing up over to protect the headlights but for now got a mud bog tomorrow trying to get this thing ready for it right now I'm gonna lift this back up in the air and I'm gonna do something about these hoses kind of weird this thing has a cooler that runs through the radiator here 
but it also has a cooler in front of the radiator. It goes through both of them. But anyway, these two lines are the ones that go down to that. Here's the thing we're trying to eliminate. So if you look right here, that'll be pretty easy to get to. And they're just on with hose clamps too. So this will actually be real easy to eliminate this whole piece. I'm just gonna run new hoses and probably just zip tie them down here. Well, in my little shop here at the Red Circle, I only found this little bit of 3 8 hose. It's not gonna be enough to run two whole new lines. But what I did find was a pair of nipples That'll be enough to connect these. I think these are long enough. I can just connect them down here. Probably not the best solution, but it's going to be quick and easy. I'm going to try to lose as little oil as possible. It's not ideal, but that should work. Slide these back on now. Okay, just a little messy there. <laughs> okay, minimum amount of oil lost. That's gonna work just fine for now anyway. Someday I'll put new hoses on here, but for the sake of getting this done today, we're gonna do this. They don't have much room to move around. I don't think I would even have to zip tie them. Clean up my Earl. I did put this on just as a temporary holder for these tubes. So I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna put one back on, but I'm gonna recess it a little bit so my plate lays up against it because I don't want my skid plate to have to bump up over this spot. So this is gonna come off of here. I'm sure I didn't weld it on too good. It should come off pretty easy. Yeah. At this point, I'm going to incorporate one more tube that comes up from here to brace this up. And I was gonna run down here to the bottom of the frame, but uh, if I do something like that, I'm pretty sure it's gonna interfere with, with this tire when I'm steering like that. So I figured if I run it up here to the front edge of the frame, uh, it should give me plenty of clearance, like 18 inches. Measure twice, cut once. Now we're just gonna have to put some birdie mouse on. Should work pretty good. So before I even mess with this, I'm just gonna go ahead and make another piece to match it. Just line these up like so. Perfect every time. See when we hold this up, see how much gaps here. And then of course we're touching here. You look at how much gap you have here, and you figure that's how much material you need to take off here to get that to touch. Just have to open that up a little bit. Of course, we're gonna have to do the same thing down here at the bottom. See where that's touching? Right here. I'm gonna put a mark there. Look and see how much gap I have over here. That's how much I'm gonna take off over here. That should get us pretty close. How's that for artwork right there? Looks like a first grader drew it. Good enough for the girls' bear dates. V cut right there. Kind of have to do the same on this one. Should be a lot closer. Yes, yeah, sir. See how we're touching up against here now. Um, still got a little gap down here, so I'm gonna have to take some more off. But that's all right. And then if you check out this side, this side's looking pretty nice. I'm at the point where I'm touching on both sides now. So now I'm gonna actually have to take a little more off the outside edge too. For this edge, I'm just gonna grind it a little bit. Definitely coming into place. Looking much better. But I'm gonna see if this fits the same on the other side. It should. Yeah, perfect fit. So now what I need to do is take my other piece here and just basically put the same edges on to this one. These should look pretty close now. That's why the second side is always gonna be so much easier because we already know about what we need. I'm gonna tack these into place and just take a step back again and make sure everything looks straight. Just took some measurements, everything looks pretty good. I'm really tempted to break my tack welds here I pull this off and weld it, but I'm a little worried that I won't be able to get it back in there how I want it. And it might warp a little bit while it's off of the truck. So I'm just gonna weld it all on the truck just to be safe. Maybe we can do a time-lapse for this because this is gonna be a lot of welding. 
You want to hold the camera the whole time? All right. On an earlier episode, I made this high clearance skid plate. You know, if you didn't see that, you should go back and take a sniff at it. Pretty cool episode. I think what I'm going to do is actually weld the skid plate. And let me tell you something. Every time I see a bed frame laying along the road, if I see one, I stop and pick them up. I'm going to use a piece of this on, on this right now. Got to get me a measurement. in there so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to make this part of my lower skid plate when this skid plate lays on i'll be able to put a couple bolts across here to hold it in you see how long this piece is oh my heavens to betsy it's like perfect fit bro oh my god for crying out loud can we make a serious youtube video well, while Bear's been over here flirting with some girls, I made this bracket for the upper part of my skid plate here. And this is going to fit up inside here. Now this tube's going to stick out further, so these bolts will be pretty well protected. Mikey likes it. Got my upper mounting bracket welded into place. Didn't put a complete weld across it. Not really necessary. And this... Uh, bed frame must be made in China it welds like shit this one on the bottom is welded onto my skid plate down here so it will be removable today's the day of this mud bog we're going to so we got to finish this Tim's here to give me a hand we're making a template now for this skid plate yep. okay these off of here. What we have here is a 4x8 sheet of 18 gauge. We decided to leave an inch overhang that we're going to score and bend to give it some strength on the edge. To score the sheet metal, we're using a cut wheel on an angle grinder up against a piece of 8 inch flat steel. The flat steel is a guide to give you a nice straight cut. A couple bends. Oh, this is the one. should fit right up in there. I think we go inch and a quarter and bend it like 45 or like 60 degrees. Okay. This is just eighth inch flat stock, inch and a quarter wide. So I'm gonna lay that right on the edge there. And we're gonna score this so, it's so we can break. bend it because we don't have a break. So now what we're gonna do is sandwich this like so with some vice grips let me grab two more vice grips I got some more over here okay All right. looks pretty good yeah. That, yeah, one is, that one's hard to release. Uh, 
it's not going to fit up in there till we cut those off. Ooh. Ooh. Bottom is good. Okay. Yes, sir. I'm going center line of Toyota emblem right now. For now. I'm trying to get these bogs, brah. Nah, I mean. I don't think I'm. <laughs> Got our skid plate up with self tappers now. Someday I'll probably change that, put bolts in it, but for now that's how I'm going to leave it because we're trying to get this mud bug. I think we are going to pull this apart quick and spray some paint on it so it doesn't rust because it's definitely going to get wet today.